Good day, class. Let's now learn another major literary genre in the form of prose. In this lesson, we are able to differentiate now what is a pro or prose compared to our previous discussion about poetry. Make sure that you take down notes in this lesson and you take note of discussions that will help you understand this particular literary genre better. Now, let's begin. In this particular lesson, we need to make sure that we are able to meet the following objectives. First, we need to define prose and, un and distinguish, distinguish it from other major literary genres. We also need to identify the elements of prose and analyze reading selections according to their elements. In this particular lesson, we need to understand that there are certain questions that we also need to anchor our discussion. How does literature become a tool not only for personal development, but also for social and cultural change? In this discussion, we are going to see many examples no, that are not only used to expound literature, to expound this genre of literature, but also are used, but are also used in tackling major societal cultural issues that affect you know, our personal development, much more so the development of the different aspects of society and culture. So let us remember or let us put into context how does literature become a tool that we are using to meet the different changes that we want in our society, in our culture. And this is not only for society and culture, but this could also be a huge reference for us to attain personal development. Let's try to talk and remember about all these things that we are opening up our discussion so that we may be able to understand better no literature as a useful medium of art. Now, as we go along this discussion, we are going to have different vocabulary words that we are going to encounter. Now, let's take a look one by one with these ex uh, vocabulary words. First, exposition. Exposition is a noun which means an important background information helpful in setting up a story. This includes the setting and the main character's backstory. Example, readers today get bored with a long exposition at the beginning, so writers now cut it up and insert it at different points in the narrative. Second, rising action. Rising action is a noun which means the series of events building up to the point of greatest importance in the narrative. Example, the rising action sets up the conflict and builds tension. Third, climax. Climax is also a noun that means the most important point of the narrative where events of the greatest intensity occur. Example, the story's climax has me at the edge of my seat. Fourth, falling action. It is also a noun which means the part of the narrative where the aftermath of the climax is addressed. Example of this, I felt that the falling action of the story left a lot of questions unanswered. And lastly, conclusion. Conclusion is a noun which refers to the end of a narrative where the story either comes to a close or is left as a cliffhanger. Example, it was mostly a good story, but that conclusion was not satisfying at all. So these are the different vocabulary words that we will be encountering as we go along our discussion. Make sure that you have taken note and remembered them for this will aid us in our lesson. Now let's, dig let's begin by defining what is a prose. Prose is any writing that does not have a metrical structure and rhythmical pattern like poetry. This is composed of sentences and paragraphs instead of lines and stanzas. So muna siya ang kalahian sa prose. Kung ang poetry class adunay metrical structure, 
meaning to say it is measured and adunay rhythmic rhythmical pattern according or sound patterns kaning prose it is plainly a, a story that we read right the, the common story that you read wherein it is comprised of sentences and paragraphs now a prose is divided into two fiction and non-fiction of course, we are going to delve deeper into the discussion of fiction because we all know what is non-fiction. Fiction, in layman's explanation, or sa madaling sabi, fiction is all about the imagination, right? Katang isip of the author. While non-fiction is based on facts, based on real-life events or occurrences. So, muna siya kalahian sa duha if we put it mildly. But if we are now going into the discussion of fiction as a type or as a form of prose, then we are going to understand that fiction is a short story that is made up or invented by an author. Events in the story are not real. Take note, events in the story are not real, but they are products of the author's imagination. So it does not mean that if it is not real, it does not have significance or influence out of real experiences of a person. The only difference is that fiction are stories whose events are part of the imagination of the author. This could be superficial, this could be hypothetical, or this could be uh, falling into the genre that is not tangible to human experiences in their day-to-day -day lives. Example is uh, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. None of us has proven the scientific uh, relativity of Harry Potter in our daily experiences. Wala man siguro wizards or witches, they are goblins and gnomes and all those magical stuffs, right? So Harry Potter falls now on the category as a fictional character as a fictional novel that is out of the imagination of J.K. Rowling. And we are not saying that J.K. Rowling invented wizardry, witches, or whatever, no. But J.K. Rowling was so fascinated with all these aspects or all these elements, wizardry, magic, right, that she was able to come up with a story, with a world. Let's just say with a world that she created out of these real-life experiences or real-life stories that she have read. Though fictional, though considered fictional, kind of wizards and witches, Dumbledore and uh, uh, Gryffindor, pero J.K. Rowling was able to merge it, right? Merge these learnings into crafting her own world and her own story. Now, Let's understand that these product, uh, these are products of the author's imagination, the author's creativity, and the author's vision. Similar to Harry Potter, which made J.K. Rowling the very first author to become a billionaire, we also have Marvel Comics, DC Comics. These are very concrete examples of fictional stories fictional characters, fictional events. That is the product of the author's imagination. But if you study them and analyze them, you can relate them to different uh, occurrences or different factual events in history. But mind you, class, that these are all part of the influence of the author that was crafted or that was integrated into art form, right? Examples of fiction are short stories and novels. Now, let's discuss what is a short story as an example of a fiction. Short stories are read in one sitting and strive for unity and effect. Meaning to say, mugbo. Mugbo nga mga istorya nga mabasa rin yung isa kalingkuran. This begins with the first sentence and has nothing in it that detracts from the writer's design. Short stories aims for the truth and stress imagination, invention, creation, and originality. Short stories are commonly read in children's textbooks or children's books, right? There are so many short stories that are uh, for children 
and for the understanding of parables, values, no attributes that children need to have or to develop at a very young age. So that is the use of a short story. Another is novels. Novels class are longer and more complex than a short story. Imagine, over 40,000 words. There are two types of novels. A novella, which has 17,500 to 39,999 words. That is the ideal number or word count of a novella. A novelette is lesser, which has 7,500 to 17,499 words. Imagine writing a story that would take up 40,000 at most, 40,000 words. That is like writing an entire essay or that en an entire research, research study. So, ingon anak po kakuyaw, ingon anak po kabagtake ang literature, I do not tayo novels, which is divided into two, novella and novelette. Your novel can be considered a novella if it reaches the certain number of words, 17,500 to 39,999. Makonsider po siya nga novelette, meaning shorter, kung naara siya 75 to 17,499. So, kung di ni kabot 7,500, sir, it could be considered a short story or a novelette, close to a novelette. Take note that in novels, characters, setting, plot, and theme are usually more developed and detailed than a short stories. If you are fond of reading Wattpad, if you are fond of reading uh, books, no novel books, then you are or ebooks, then you are able to understand what I am saying when we when we say that uh, character setting, plot, and theme are usually developed and detailed than a short story because the writer now or the author now is given more uh, flexibility, is given more time and length, right? To exercise his or her freedom, to exercise his or her imagination in how they wanted to develop the character, the setting, the theme, so on and so forth. Most importantly, the plot and the theme, right? Unsaon nila pag-develop. Which character dies along the way? Which character becomes triumphant? Which character develops a different kind of, of character, a different kind of attitude along the story, so on and so forth? Mas detalyado siya sa short story. Mona bitaw that uh, if you are not really a voracious reader, you become bored in reading novels because it is very detailed. Up to the very most right, minute detail, it is being discussed. It is being laid out by the author because it is what is needed to expound the idea, to bring you to the actual, right, to the actual scenario, to the actual story. So that's the beauty of literature. Now, Let's talk about the different plot structure. In, in poetry class, this is not really something that is laid out or that is kana bitong evident nga uh, klaro kaayo ang plot structure because it also has different elements. While in prose, we discuss plot structure as if we are trying to lay out a plan, right? A plan of action in order for us to identify and to analyze what the story is all about. So, in discussing plot structure, we need to remember that linear, linear format produces a climactic plot. This contains the exposition, rising action, climax, and falling action leading to the resolution of the story. Now, take note that some stories follow a nonlinear format. It means that some stories start in the middle or at the end. Now, we talk about plot structure, we have two. Episodic plot. First, let's discuss episodic plot. Episodic plot features distinct episodes that are related to one another, but uh, that also can be read individually, almost as stories by themselves. <clears throat> Example is The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. If we talk about this, every plot could become an episode of its own. Meaning to say, this is what we see or this is what we commonly view or commonly see in Kanibitao 
um, telenovelas, right, that we see kani mga shows on ABS, CBN, GMA, TV5. Every the plot is divided into different episodes for us to understand better what the story is trying to tell us or where the story is going. Mona, a good plot structure is determined as to how the story is conveyed, right? Whether you are reading it per episode or you are you are compiling it, you're compacting it. Masabta ni mo kung unsa ang istorya niya. Next, we also have cumulative plot. This contains the repetition of phrases, sentences, or events with one new aspect added with each repetition. This is common among children's stories. Example, The Three Little Pigs. If you have read this uh, novel or short story, The Three Little Pigs, ginabalik-balik lang yung class. The phrases, the sentences, or events ginahitabo. However, there is now development, no? there is now different aspects. Sabi nga, nang sin- kagaya ng sinang sinabi, there are now different aspects or different factors that are added in the repetition or with every repetition to make the story more compelling and more comprehensive, trying to develop a certain attitude or attribute among its readers. Kaya nga, this is more common among children's stories. Another is frame narrative or embedded plot. This is a story in which another story or other multiple stories is are embedded. This can also be that the main story is relayed secondhand to a character in the narrative. Example is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Sign of Four. Now, these may not be too uh, mainstream or too well-known examples, but in the classic times or in, in, in academic no, uh, literature examples, these are the things that we need to study and analyze because this will become more useful to us as we go along with the different or with the deepening of higher, higher education that we are going to attain, right? So that is the frame narrative or embedded plot. Now, let's try to look at this example, The Piece of String by Guy de Maupassant. I want you to understand that I will not be reading to you the entire novel, but instead, I will just show you now, what we have talked about, the difference between a short story and a novel, and unsay purma, unsay dagway aning novel, just for the sake of our discussion, we are going to delve into that. No, We are going to see whether this is fiction or non-fiction, but most of the time, novels are fiction that they try to relate to uh, non-fictional events or characters. Dagan kita experiences pwede mo hunahunaan where there is um, El Filibusterismo, No Limitangere, wherein the characters are fictional. Dili tinuod, dili na to mahal, makita. We cannot, uh, dili mahalubilo. But, if you look deeper, it is related. No, It is related to the different experiences of Filipinos during the time of the Spaniards. So, this is also an example of that. The piece of string. Now, if you read the story class, then you will be able to understand what the story is telling us, what the story is all about. Okay? The Piece of String by Guy de Maupassant. At least allow me to read to you the first paragraph. It was market day, and from all the country round Goderville, the peasants and their wives were coming toward the town. The men walked slowly throwing the whole body forward at every step of their long, crooked legs. They were deformed from pushing the plow, which makes the left shoulder higher and bends their figures sideways, from reaping the grain when they have to spread their legs so as to keep on their feet. Their starched blue blouses, glossy as though varnished, ornamented at collar and cuffs with a little embroidered design and blown out around their bony bodies, looked very much like balloons about to soar, whence issued two arms and two feet. So if you're going to look closely into the first paragraph, the discussion now is not really so much about giving us the plot or giving away the plot of the story, but it opens up about the setting. 
it opens up about the theme. No, what is the feel around or what is the feel revolving the story? What are the characters like? The attributes of the characters. Where is this happening? What is the town? Right? And what can you imagine or what can you picture out out of the definition that they have given? Class, let me let mind you that the author here is trying to identify or trying to define or describe to us one specific character. And these are the men in that particular town or the men in Goderville. Of course, wala man tayo lugar nga Goderville. Or if there is a place or a town that is Goderville, it is not given no, nga ang mga tao sa Goderville is like what is portrayed in this particular story. But if we go along, we are going to understand na mauday ni ang klase sa tao nga naa sa story. Mga pobre, this is the theme. Right? These are the characters. This is the setting. And we are going to understand the plot because this particular novel class is quite long. And if you're going to understand, if you're going to read this, right? I do not say different characters that arrive along the way, characters that are vanished, and characters that have conversations. Conversations that will let us understand better you know, what is the plot. Because if it's going to be plainly narrative, then it, it does not add up to what is being discussed. So conversations are really uh, adding up no, to our discussion and making sure that the discussion is leading us to understanding the story even better. right? So we have discussions there. And the discussions are also portraying to us how, right? how the characters feel or what impacts the characters in this particular discussions. Okay? So, aduna na na siya. Ni Ana, na Ana na siya mga uh, different, uh, different emotions that are being portrayed. Now, after the story, we now, it is very important that we now go into the guide questions that will help us understand better. What is the story all about? No, the feelings that are present, the main characters. Who are the main characters? The primary conflict that the characters find themselves in. And then how we are able to describe this, the structure of the plot of the story. The climactic events, asa ang pinaka-intense nga panghitabo dito, asa ang falling action that leads to the resolution of the story and ultimately the conclusion. And after all of that, we need to understand unsay mensahe sa story. Unsa ang ginakonvey nga mensahe sa istorya. So that is something that we need to remember when we are going to read long novels such as this example. We need to understand that novels are something that we can use no, as an outlet, as an avenue to understand ourselves, to understand our society, and perhaps to know what impacts or what influences our society at large. So that is an example of a prose. Now, in this particular lesson, we have already stated no, the different guide questions. I want you to analyze the poem below, The Lady or the Tiger by Frank Stockton. And then afterwards, I want you to answer the following response questions that will tell me if you have understood the story I am checking this, by the way, in your module, so I hope that you are really doing this one, okay? Now, with that being said, I have a question to end this discussion. Class, how can learning about prose help you understand concepts and express ideas? There are two aspects or two factors that we are looking into. First, understanding concepts, and second, expressing ideas. How does no, learning about prose help us understand concepts and most importantly, express our ideas? Take note that in the discussion, we have talked about fiction, non-fiction, plot structure, so on and so forth. Class, remember that when you are able to understand a concept, you are able to understand a particular scenario, a particular event, then you will be able to express ideas well. Because there is comprehension. The key word there is comprehension. Understanding. Understanding the concept and identifying 
what are the best ways, right, to express your ideas? What are the best attributes that you can manifest in the ideas that you're expressing in order for you to be understood as well by the people that will be reading your form of artwork or the people that will be listening to the idea that you are expressing, be it vocabul uh, vocally. So that is something that we need to understand because nowadays we see a lot of people that try to express their, their ideas but in the first place did not really understood the concept that they are trying to expound on. So that is tangible and that is a way for toxic discussions that we get to experience day by day. So we need to remember that um, being able to express an idea would always begin by being able to understand the concept that you're trying to express. Understand the concept where it is revolving from, right? So this has been a very lengthy discussion for us and I hope that you're able to learn you know, the prose. What is a prose as a major literary genre? All right. Thank you so much for listening, and don't rem don't forget to please, please, please answer your modules and submit on time. Thank you.